Can you discuss uh, what you saw last season from the development of the two young guys, Keaton Ellis and Marquise Wilson, and and what you expect from them uh, when the season begins? Yeah, with uh, Keaton and Marquise, you know, obviously they played a lot of football for us as true freshmen. Uh, their development throughout the season, uh, they just continue to get better and better. Um, you know, obviously, you know, in the bowl game, Marquise had a, a critical interception late in the game uh, that helped us, you know, in that game. Uh, you know, we're really looking forward to those guys. We, we see them both as major contributors. They're both battling uh, for that other starting corner position. Um, their development through the offseason, you know, they had a great winter um, leading into the spring. They're, they're both hitting the weight room really hard. Uh, they're very conscientious guys. They, they're, they know the system well. I'm looking forward to, you know, when we have the opportunity to get back out on the field and see those two guys continue to develop. Next up is Frank Bodetti, York Daily Record. Hi, Coach. How are you doing today? Good to, good to talk to you. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to ask you about, actually, Lamont Wade. I know he's a safety now. He, he started with you. But can you talk about maybe how you've seen his growth and the impact that a guy like that has, not just on his position, but your position, the rest of the defense. Yeah. Lamont has grown tremendously, you know, from the, the time he walked in as a freshman, um, you know, playing right away. Um, you know, his maturity is at a different level. His leadership is at a different level. And, you know, he's truly the leader of the entire secondary. You know, we, we meet separately, corners and safeties, but when we come together, he's the leader of the group. And, you know, wouldn't be surprised to, you know, you know Lamont is probably going to be a captain of the team. Um, he's, he's the voice of our defense. You know, his, his growth has been tremendous in the sense of he now knows exactly who he is, what strengths and weaknesses. He knows what he needs to work on and develop. Um, he's become a really good football player for us. He had a great season for us last year. And, you know, we're just looking forward to, to his senior year, just uh, exploding and, and doing some great things for us. Next up is Mark Brennan, Lions 247. Hi, Terry. I wonder if you could also touch on uh, Joey Porter Jr. And, and Daquan and kind of how you saw them come along, especially Daquan, because we didn't see him at all last year. And can you also touch on that class in general to bring in four cornerbacks kind of of that caliber in one class? What did that kind of mean to the program? Yeah, you know, starting with Joey Porter, you know, obviously he, he brings great length, great athleticism, um, you know, excited to see his growth, you know, from freshman redshirt year to, you know, now repeating the freshman year uh, athletically. Uh, he's done a great job off the field. He's, he's picked up the system. Um, I think he's in the mix as well for that starting position. Uh, you know, we played him in the four games that we were allowed to play him. And, you know, he showed up and he, he made some plays. And, you know, he nearly had a, a nice interception at the Maryland game. So just looking forward to him continuing to progress. Uh, Daquan Hardy, you know, was one of our uh, scout team players of the year. You know, had a great – off season, you know, he's, he's picked up 14, 15 pounds. Uh, he's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster. He's super smart. He's probably one of the smarter guys in the room. Uh, he continues to develop, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to play some at our star position. Uh, and I'm looking forward to him com competing as well. And, you know, when you talk about the whole group to bring in four guys you know, we, we really feel like we, we hit it great with all four guys. Usually when you bring four in, one or two won't, aren't quite what you think they're going to be or what you thought they were going to be. Uh, we, we feel fantastic with all four of them. feel like all four are going to develop into to, you know, major contributors for us. Whether they're the starter or not, they're going to be guys that are going to play a lot of football, whether it be special teams. Uh, I tend to rotate my guys quite a bit. Um, from past history. So, you know, those guys, are, you're going to see the field quite a bit. Next up is Audrey Snyder, The Athletic. Hey, Terry, good morning, and thanks for your time. 
Um, kind of going along, along those lines, rotating guys and all these new faces, um, where does Donovan Johnson kind of factor into all of this? Because obviously he got hurt last year. Yeah, so Donovan is a uh, – he's a major factor in that as well. You know, he, he's played a lot of football up until his injuries. You know, unfortunately for him, the last two seasons have been marred with injury. You know, but prior to that, he was right there in the mix. He's very talented. He's very skilled, uh, knowledgeable, experienced. So he's in the mix, you know, and, and prayerfully, you know, he, he's completely 100% healthy and nothing happens going forward. But, but he's got an opportunity and coming into once we get back to ball, I mean, he's, he's going to be the first guy on the field to, to play and compete, and then we'll see how this thing shakes out. It's, it's a great thing for us, especially in my room. I've got quite a few guys that I feel can contribute, you know, so we have great competition, which means these guys got to show up every day and perform day in and day out through practice and through games. Bob Flounders, Penn Live. Hi, Terry. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Terry, I wondered, uh, from a coaching perspective, can you talk a little bit about um, the stress that Kirk Shiraka's offense puts on uh, your cornerbacks? You saw a little, bit, a little bit of it when you guys played the Gophers uh, in November. I know it's different uh, at Penn State, uh, but can you talk a little bit about what his offense kind of does in terms of putting stress uh, on the cornerbacks? And also, what's it like without Sean Spencer this year? Yeah, so Kirk Soraka, you know, obviously, if you can't beat him, we had to bring him to us to join us. So uh, what a fantastic offensive mind. Um, you know, we're excited to have Kirk here, you know, in that game, uh, you know, preparing for Minnesota and preparing for Kirk's offense. You know, he has a strong RPO game. And with the RPO game, it, it limits your, your underneath help for the secondary. So your box players, your linebackers and your, your defensive line, they're connected to the line of scrimmage because they got to play run first. And now it leaves your corners and your safeties out there on islands. And the receivers have a lot more, you know, two way goes with no underneath presence from the linebackers. So that puts a lot of stress on you, you know, and, you know, when, you, when you're in, in zone coverage and you're having zone eyes to the quarterback and these, these receivers are snapping their routes in front of you and you don't have the presence of a linebacker underneath you, it's, it's stress, you know. And, and as you can see, you know, we had a, a tough, tough day that day. Um, you know, so like I said, we're, we're going to continue to work on that and, and prepare for that and, and get our guys in better position. Uh, when you play the RPO game, it, it's more like playing like Army West Point. It's, it's, it's option football. It's you, you have to play your responsibility and you can't get caught peeking another direction. Otherwise, they're going to make you pay for that thing. So, you know, your, to answer your second question, uh, Coach Spencer, you know, obviously Coach Spencer is a great personality. Uh, he was the life of our, our defensive staff and our defensive unit. And, you know, we miss him dearly. Uh, he had a tremendous opportunity with the Giants to progress his career, so we're really, really happy for him. Uh, we brought in a guy, you know, John Scott, who we feel that we won't miss a beat. You know, John has NFL experience. He's coming from the SEC. He's bringing a different type of flavor and energy that, that we've welcomed and the, the players have welcomed, and we're excited about the opportunity for him to take us to, to new heights and to, you know, make us a better defense. Next up is John Patishnock, happyvalley.com. Hey, good morning, Terry. Thanks for the time and glad to hear that you and your family are doing well. Thank you. Hey, there's always been a lot of discussion about what Penn State football means to this community and to the entire Commonwealth, especially with what we're going through. Can you describe the role that you think the football program can play in bringing people together once we get through these stay-at-home orders and the initial wave of this virus? Yeah, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're all dealing with some tough times and, you know, just a new way of life. Uh, and, and we're all in this together. You know, we're, we're super thankful for, you know, all the volunteers out there, all the medical staff that are, you know, putting themselves at risk to, to help the community. And, uh, you know, yeah, Penn State football, you know, we're, we're a major factor in our community. And we know that we, we take on that responsibility and, 
you know, once we get back to, you know, being able to be on campus and football can move forward, you know, we're, we're looking to contribute in the community where we can. Um, you know, there's two things that bring communities together and it's tragedy and it's sports. And, and for our community, Penn State football is that, that bond. And, you know, we're, we're going to love on each other. We're going to rally around our community. We're going to rally around Penn State Nation and, uh, and, and just try to, to, to receive all the love and give all the love and try to get our community back to, you know, thriving and happiness and, you know, get Happy Valley back to happy. Next up is Donnie Collins, Times Tribune. Hey, Coach. Thanks for doing this today. Um, I was just wondering about uh, your assessment of uh, Tariq Castro Fields' performance last year and, and how much are you guys kind of counting on him to, to be the leader of that group this year? Yeah, so Tariq, you know, um, the, the big thing with Tariq, you know, obviously he's the leader of the corner room. You know, we're looking forward to Tariq having a great offseason and Tariq, you know, uh, not to put pressure on him, needs to have a great year for us. We, we need a lockdown corner that can handle the best receiver of whoever our opponent is. And, you know, we, we expect Tariq to be that guy. Uh, his season last year was almost like two different seasons. The first half of the season, he came out the gate looking like a first-round draft pick. He was played very well, and then he suffered an injury. And from that injury on – he was a different player. He wasn't as confident. He wasn't as uh, sure of himself. Uh, and because of the injury, you know, and, and not to make an excuse, and he knows and recognizes it, and we've talked about it. And, you know, it's one of our offseason plans and goals for himself is to make sure that he can be more consistent throughout the season. You know, obviously the first half of the season, he played exactly how we wanted him to play. And in the second half, you know, football is a, a physical sport. The injuries are going to come. The, the peaks and the valleys are going to come. But we have to remain consistent through all of that and, and perform the same way, you know, play in and play out. And so he understands that, you know, and there's, there's no added pressure to him because it's something he wants for himself. You know, he, he wants to be a first-round draft pick. And so along with that comes a great responsibility of covering the best receiver of the other of, of the opponent and, and performing at a high level, making the play when you need to make the play. And, you know, our other goal for him is, you know, he's a good cover corner, but now it's time to not just be a good cover corner, go make plays as a cover corner, you know, get, get the ball back, make interceptions, force fumbles, you know, make big game changing plays where it impacts the game and gets the ball back to our offense. So those guys can go down and score touchdowns. Next up is Nubias Wilbur, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hey, Terry, how are you doing, man? Very well, thanks. Good, good. Um, question for you. I guess, um, where are you guys looking? You mentioned, Tariq, but what other areas are you looking for to improve in the passing game? But there are some times where you guys seem to get exploited a little bit there. Where are some areas you guys looking to get better? What are, what are you working on even in this process? Yeah, well, o overall, you know, when you look into our zone schemes, you know, the, the underneath coverage from – our linebackers got to get better. You know, there's often times through play action, we just talked about the RPOs, you know, when, when there's any mesh with the quarterback in the back, our, our backers can't be stepping into the line of scrimmage, you know, and, it, and it, it, we have to make sure we get our drops. We got to have better zone vision, better eye vision from our, our secondary. Uh, and then we got to have better communication. You know, there's times – I think it was the Rutgers game. We completely blew a coverage and guys running down the middle of the field wide open. That can't happen. I mean, no matter how we look at it, that can never happen. So our communication has to get better. Um, you know, the one thing that we did really, really well was, you know, we were, I think, third in the nation in least touchdown passes given up. So, you know, we gave up a lot of pass yards this year, which we're going to fix that. Uh, but the one thing we did well was we didn't give up home runs over the top. We made teams earn their points, and teams couldn't earn their points against us. And, you know, we want to remain stout up front in the run game, but we got to get the pass game to match it. Next up is Greg Pickle, Penn Live. Hey, good morning, Coach. I was just curious if you could assess where you think you guys are from a recruiting standpoint. You've had a nice little run here that could continue, but based on where you normally would be, 
under, of course, normal circumstances at this time of year, heading into the blue-white game uh, in a hypothetical sense compared to past years. How would you just assess how things have gone so far and what the outlook is for the class of 2021 here moving forward? Yeah, I think we're doing a fantastic job right now. You know, we're, we're really happy where we are. You know, we've, we've gotten some good commits here in the last week. We're, we're anticipating maybe a couple more coming up here. Um, you know, we're, we're probably a little bit ahead of schedule. Usually the, the blue-white weekend, we, we grab a few and then it kind of snowballs. You know, the, the, the commitments kind of run in rally. So you get one, you usually get two or three, and then you get a little lull and then you – make a little run again. And, and usually that starts right around that blue white weekend. So, you know, it started a week earlier and uh, you know, we're really happy though. You know, we're working really hard. You know, obviously everyone is working remotely from home. And so to me, the, the, the recruiting has really picked up. Like it's, it's super busy. I'm, you know, from the time I wake up, I'm on my phone to the time I lay down and just say enough is enough. I got to go to sleep. Uh, you're just constantly recruiting and communicating with prospects and, you know, and it's been great. You know, there's, there's a lot of great prospects out there interested in Penn state. And, you know, this year is going to be a smaller class, you know, last year we took a huge class. And, and so, you know, you're going to cut almost 10 guys difference from last year's class to this year's class. So we got to be a little bit more particular to what we want. And, um, but it's been great. You know, we're, we're doing a, a, a really good job on offense, defense, and, you know, we got a couple of special teams guys that we're, we're looking for as well. Tyler Donahue, Lions 247. Good morning, Terry. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Um, we talked a lot about the young cornerbacks. One guy who's leaving, who spent a lot of time playing for you, is John Reed. We're coming up on the NFL draft here in a couple of weeks. He, he seemed to really do well for himself out in Indianapolis, didn't have the pro day like everybody else. You get a call right now from an NFL front office executive, and they say, why are we taking John Reed in the NFL draft? What's, what's your answer? My answer is John Reed has the best feet in the draft of any corner out there. Um, John Reed is smarter than anybody out there. John Reed's going to work extremely hard. Um, you know, he has an engineering degree. Um, you know, football is important to him. You know, it, it's, it's, it's how he wants to feed his family. Um, John Reed is a great cover guy. You know, this year he worked tremendously on improving his tackling as a junior. He struggled as a tackler and this year he, he led our team in missed tackle percentage. Um, so he knows where his weaknesses are and where his strengths are. And, you know, John's projected to be a nickel in the, in the NFL. And I don't know if there's a better prospect going into the draft to play inside against those slots to play against a guy like KJ Hamler, who's dynamic or Deshaun Jackson, or, you know, these dynamic slot uh, receivers, because true corners, you know, a lot of those guys struggle when you put them in the inside, they, they can't handle a receiver that has a two way go. John Reed can handle that. And he's the best in the draft, in my opinion. Time for a couple more. We got Jerry DePaula, Pittsburgh Tribune review. Uh, good morning, Terry. Uh, glad to hear you're doing. You and your family are doing well. Thanks, Jerry. I was just wondering, Terry, if you miss the excitement of uh, coaching on Friday nights. And that number two is, um, what's the big difference between connecting to high school kids as compared to connecting with college kids? So Friday nights, um, you know, obviously it's a different feel. You know, when when you're a high school coach that community feel of, of the community around you where you grew up and the kids or the families are all right there. Uh, yeah, I miss that. It's, it's a great family feeling. Um, you know, when you, when you're talking about uh, the difference in connecting to college kids versus high school kids, the high school kids, you know, the majority of your team in high school isn't going to go play college football. The majority of those guys are, are playing because their buddies playing, because the community's strong and it supports them, you know, for a, a various amount of reasons. Uh, when, you, when you come to college, well, we've recruited these guys here. They're here to play football, and they're going to go to school and be a student athlete. But their main purpose is to come play football. Even the walk-ons, they're, 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 they're enticed or recruited to, to come here. And so their full commitment is football. Uh, and in high school, it's just a little bit different, you know, and there's guys, don't get me wrong, that that's what their purpose is. But, you know, 
every level, in my opinion, in the locker room, you lose slightly a little bit, meaning you, you go from high school where that locker room is so pure, so genuine, there's, there's no money involved in it, they're doing it because they love it. Then you go up to college and it's, it's pure to a sense, but those guys have their eyes on the NFL. And at the end, end point is, I got to get to the NFL. Then you get to the NFL, well, I got to protect my family. I got to play for my family. So we're a bunch of individuals in that locker room. So every level, we lose a little bit of that team camaraderie. And at high school, it's at its purest. And our last question is John Sauber, Center Daily Times. Hey, Terry, thanks for taking the time. How do you replace someone like John Reed who could drop down to the nickel and play outside? Is there someone on the roster who can replicate that skill set? Or do you expect multiple guys to step in and take up that role? So right now we're, we're expecting multiple guys. You know, obviously uh, Lamont Wade played the nickel last year for us a lot. Um, you know, what, what happens with the nickel, depending on, you know, where he comes from, whether, you know, Lamont's a safety John Reed was a corner, you know, so the nickel can come from either room. It depends on the depth of the room as to where the position is going to come from. So, you know, last year I had those four true freshmen and early in the season, they just weren't ready to, to go out there and be able to handle the corner position to allow John to bump in. And at the safety position, we had Jaquan Brisker, who was ready to come in and, and fill that position. So that's how Lamont ended up playing more nickel than John Reed. And so, you know, this year, the safety position has a little bit more question marks. You know, we, we've got Taquan Brisker and, and we've got Lamont, but then there's a group of guys that we're not sure who that next person is that's going to emerge. And then and at the corner position, you know, we got some young guys, we kind of know what they got. And so, you know, it, it may lend that, you know, it, the, the, corner, the, the star position may come from my room, which, you know, that would be a Donovan Johnson. That would be a Keaton Ellis. Uh, that would be a Daquan Hardy. All three of those guys are nickel guys. They practice the nickel. Um, they know the nickel, and they have opportunities. So between those three and Lamont Wade, you know, those are the four guys that are vying for that nickel position. And, you know, like I said, the depth will kind of dictate which room it comes from. And then from there, we'll pinpoint who that true nickel player is.